Hello everyone, this is Chemdork, and welcome to another Buildcraft series where we will be doing a little more experimentation. Today's topic is going to be obsidian pipes. thing I have right in front of me here, and we're just going to do all about obsidian pipes. It's, um, they're pretty simple stuff, they're pretty cool things, and, um, you know, basically... I will be going into slight detail in terms of how they work, but basically the idea behind an obsidian pipe is it can suck up items that go along the pipe. So if you, um, actually, if you just throw an item onto an obsidian pipe, it doesn't do anything. Nothing at all, because it's nothing to do, it doesn't suck it anywhere because there's nothing, no place for it to go. If you give it a direction to go into, you see how the obsidian pipe went, it sucked it right in. There you go, nice little sound effect. Um, yeah, that's cool. So, I've used this before. I've used it in my item storage system. That's how obsidian pipes work. And, uh, but the problem is that, uh, there's a limited range. See, the item has to be exactly in the same, um, block as the obsidian pipe. And let's see if we, you know, uh, also obsidian pipes can't connect to one another, as uh, you may already know. So this means that, um, this works up and down too, so I'm throwing them in this block and they're not getting sucked up. If I throw them in midair, they will get sucked up, but that's only because they're entering this block that is occupied one space above uh, uh, the ground there by that pipe. So that's kind of fun, but it kind of sucks because it's sort of not as useful. Turns out obsidian pipes can uh, suck in a larger direction, I should say, if they're powered by an engine. And I really want to figure out what is the maximum range of, ooh, that's, that's weird, uh, of, uh, of these things based on the engine. And I think there's actually a pretty good way of doing it. You, know, you can actually see this in some videos, you can see this on the wiki, but no one uh, really has done this in a, a three-dimensional uh, viewpoint, you know? And I was interested to say, okay, uh, I, I see how, what you guys are doing in terms of, uh, you know, in two dimensions and showing us exactly what it looks like on the ground. But uh, it's really important, I think, to do it in three dimensions. So I have these about like five blocks up, blocks up, I think. And we'll be using flowers. And what I kind of plan to do is um, just kind of setting it up like this. I'll turn on the engine and um, throw items in front of it. I'm pretty sure the redstone engine means that it'll be able to collect items like in this block, which it can. See how it landed in that block? Uh, thing is, I have to wait for the stroke of the engine. See. The power of the engine comes only at that point when the engine is actually moving. So let's, it'll be on that block. Okay, so we know that, uh, come on, there we go. All right, it can pull one item at a time, which is expected, at least one block in front of it. So let's put a yellow block there just to see. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to toss an item right here. Can it pull... Oh, that came right back at me. Hold on. Can it pull two blocks in front of it? Apparently no, but let's see if this works um, this way. No, doesn't look like it can. Uh, what about to the side here? So let's uh, throw an item right here. Yep, okay, it pulls it there. Um, and now does the fact that an item, a block is here, does that affect it? Uh, apparently not. Let's see that. Wait. Nope, looks like it can pull it right through. Okay, well, ah, that's not what I wanted to do. All right, let's do it this way. Um, let's see if it works the same over here. Oops. Yep, okay, cool. And now, uh, hmm, this gives me interest to see whether it uh, reacts the same way underneath. Because I think it will, based on, you know, just symmetry. Okay, cool. So, looks like the pattern is as you see here. Uh, I'm going to throw it on everything above here and see what gets pulled up. Okay, only that one. Um, let me just confirm. Oops, that one didn't go in, I don't think, but let's see. Okay, oh, it did pull from there. Oh, interesting. Okay, it did pull that one. What about this guy? He's sitting on that one block. Yay, he gets pulled too. Okay, so I guess maybe it should pull from here. 
and um, I would expect it to be able to pull from there. Yep, okay, it pulls from there, so we'll keep on doing this. So I'm going to keep on doing this, and uh, we'll see what kind of shape we get from this. So I'll be back. Okay, I'm back. Now this is kind of interesting. So it can pull in a shape, you know, I've seen shapes from above, and it looks like it would be able to pull from there, there, and there next to it. It looks like it can pull here. This is actually a 3x3 three three grid right in front of it, but not in front of that. And if you remove this 3x3 three three grid, it still can't pull it. Um, but it looks like it can sort of pull when the even blocks are in the way. Now, a really interesting thing about this, I was thinking that it would be able to pull from, say, here. So if I'm careful not to... Um, and it turns out it can't. So... Um, but this, this means that, is it just where it can't pull below it? So I, it kind of calls me to think about, okay, if, we, if this is a 3x3 three three grid, so I'll just draw the 3x3 three three grid it should be able to pull from. What if we, oops, what if we have it pull up? So I'll do that. Whoops. Let's give it a chest over there. You don't have to give it a chest, but uh, I did. So there, whatever peoples, whatevers. Um, I'll have it just do this, and, uh, yeah, I'll power it, power it, and then, um, uh, I'm gonna go ahead and throw some items on here. Wow, okay, that's interesting. So, it, uh, appears to have a directionality to this, and yet, when I do this, Yep, it can pull from those items down there. It can pull from all um, four of those items. Yeah, you see. Cool. All right. So that's that. That's 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 some learning for you. Looks like there is actually a directionality to this now. Um, so let's move on. I'm gonna do the same thing uh, now for the steam, and I'll do the same thing for the. Um, combustion engines. So I'll be back in a little bit. Uh, we don't have to bore you with that because it's going to be the same process of just sort of placing a block and then placing an item on top of that block. And for example, if I have a block here, place an item on top and it gets pulled in, I'll take that item away or I'll mark that item with a block right in the next section because that item is actually, when it's on top of this block, it's actually essentially in this block space, right? Make sense? Okay. So that's how I did it there. I'm going to do the same thing here and the same thing here. Okay, so I'll be back. So I outlined the areas for the steam and combustion engines, and just to let you know, these are still operating just as normal. Um, so I've outlined these areas here and in yellow wool, and something really kind of cool uh, came about with this. As you see, if we compare a wooden engine, uh, or the redstone engine, versus the steam engine, versus the combustion engine, the wooden engine, and the re or the redstone engine, obviously pulls the smallest area, but the steam and combustion engines pull exactly the same profile for the, um, the blocks for which it can pull items from. And uh, it turns out these items you can pull, oops, uh, so, uh, yeah, you can pull the items through other blocks, so each one of these yellow um, wool blocks represents, if you place an item in that block space, it will be pulled in. So you see there's the little red flower we had that was here. Um, yeah, so it means, you know, any of these blocks where I remove it and place an item in there, uh, you will pull in that item. So there it goes, pulling it in, but if I place one on top so this occupies the block space that would be occupied by, you know, something that was right here, for example. If I turn it on, oh, wait, I gotta wait for this to cool. Combustion engines are now really kind of annoying in this version. You have to actually wait for them to cool. So I'll do it with the steam engine. Uh, so I'll put, place it right here, turn it on, and you see it doesn't pull from there. But if I kind of get rid of this block, you see how it just gets pulled right in. So. Oops, well, yeah, that's one way to shut it off. I kind of don't want to do that. There we go. Yeah, okay, there we go. Um, so I guess the difference between combustion and steam engines for obsidian pipes really is the number of items they can pull at once. So um, I'll go ahead and set up that experiment, and then I'll be back and we'll test uh, how many items per stroke of an engine. Now, we know from a redstone engine that it's one item. That's, that's obvious and easy to, to figure out. But let's, let me figure out the maximum for steam and combustion and whether that actually is a, 
variable at all. So we'll see in a second. Okay, we have a place set up right here. Um, we have steam engine, combustion engine. I'm just going to start, uh, well, I'll throw a bunch of items on the ground and uh, we'll kind of see. It'll be a little bit annoying for the combustion engine, but uh, for the steam engine, I will throw a bunch of items. Actually, what I'll do is uh, first let's go ahead and oop, there we go and just toss a stack on the ground and see how many strokes of the engine it takes to suck up the entire stack. And then we'll estimate how many that means per uh, stroke. We'll see what the difference is. So let's count. One, two, three, four, five, six, all right, six strokes. Uh, six doesn't go evenly into 64, so that leads me to believe that there are um, not an even number of, uh, or not a standard number of items that are pulled. We'll actually count how many were pulled per stroke of the engine. And uh, let's, let's do it this way now. Let's just look at this chest Oops, as uh, items come into it. Six, thirteen, ooh, wow, thirteen, 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 oh, okay, well, that's interesting, and uh, there's nothing, okay, well, that that's actually an interesting thing, it looks like maybe the first um, little bit actually is, uh, uh, it needs to sort of warm up first, huh, that's kind of interesting. Maybe that's the case. Let me, let me look and see if it's uh, repeatable. So let's uh, just give it all those. Oops. We'll see in a second. Uh, there we go. So maybe six at the first one. Uh, yep, six. Thirteen. Thirteen. Okay. Thirteen. Oh, that's interesting. Thirteen. Thirteen. 12, okay. 8? That's all of them. Okay, huh, interesting. So, um, it might actually have to do with how many are on the ground. So there might be some sort of algorithm that we're not really seeing. Um, let's just sort of treat it as there's excess, and uh, we'll see what happens there. I'm not really willing to go into any complicated algorithms if they exist already. So let me actually see what happens with the combustion engine, and we'll count that. And we'll actually count it the same way. It's one, two, three, four, five. Okay, five for those um, bunch there. So that's 16, 16, 16, 16, and 14. Okay, well, uh, that makes actually sense. So the combustion engine looks like it's about 16 per, uh, per stroke of the engine. So let's uh, let it cool all the way. No, nope, got to let it cool a little more. Nope, gotta let it cool a little more. This is the annoying part. Oh, come on. It's already cool. So it's it's actually showing as blue, but it's not completely cooled down. Uh, I think we can actually cool it down by adding some water. Um, yeah, this is, this is the feature that's a little annoying now with this new version. Okay, there we go. So let's see how many come in. Now with Steam, there was actually a, a lag, but it looks like it's 16 each time. 16, 16, 16... 16. Okay. So it's pretty standard at 16 per uh, pull of the combustion engine. And with the steam engine, it was strange how there was actually a lag time in terms of uh, how, how powerful it was. And that's what took five strokes of the engine to actually do anything. Right. Yep, again, it's the same thing. Six and then 13. 13... 13. Really repeatable, actually. Let's do one more test before we move on, and that is to do essentially what we did before. This time, let's look at a distance dependence, if there is actually a distance dependence for how items are pulled. So this is 1, 2, 3, 4. We just looked at what happens with 4 blocks away. What if an item is... Um, what if an item's right next to the obsidian pipe? 
how is this affected? Is uh, I might actually expect that these ID engines can pull um, oops a little a little better. So let's uh, let's go ahead and see. Let me try to toss toss two stacks on there, and let's first do the steam engine. See how many strokes and uh, how many items per stroke. That's one, two. Uh, it's weird. It looks like there's a lot of items in that two. So there's um, 25 in the first. Wow, okay, so that's more than last time. 51, holy crap. 52, so... Uh, oh. Yeah, wow, okay. So just like last time, the first stroke of the steam engine pulled less than the subsequent strokes, but uh, it was way more than um, the, uh, the... the What is this? One, two, three... Whoops. One, two, three... Four blocks away had... Um, what was it? Six, and then 13, 13, 13... Um, this was 25, and then 50, 51, 52 uh, for the next strokes. So let's see what happens when the combustion engine does it. And we would probably expect that the combustion engine, like before, whoops, will pull. Um, yep. <laughs> yeah, I see what happens. I just, uh, I just toss that into the pipe. The combustion engine, I would expect, will be able to pull the full stack of items with each stroke. So I'm expecting two strokes for the combustion engine. Yep, and that's indeed the case. Looks like 64 and 64. So let's see what happens. 64, 64. Yep. So, okay. Uh, so there is a distance dependence on this um, in terms of how the items are pulled. So, okay. There you have it. So that's pretty cool. Uh, this is actually a pretty cool, cool little thing we set up here. And um, what it means is, so what we learned thus far, what did we learn today? So we learned that uh, obsidian pipes can pull things. If they're not powered, the items have to fall exactly right on the obsidian pipe like you just saw. Uh, oh, that reminds me, there's one final thing I want to show you. And that is, yeah, I have, can have one set up right here. It's uh, just, just like this. Okay, so if I just throw an item here, see how it's moving through the obsidi obsidian pipe. If I just throw it so it's just like this. You notice how that item I'm throwing right now is going a lot faster than the previous item? It's kind of hard to show this. So these are all going at the same speed, and now I'm going to throw one. It's going to overtake all of those. See how that happens? It actually turns out in this version of Buildcraft, version 3, they've added the fact that obsidian pipes, the items coming into an obsidian pipe, move as quick as they are thrown in, I guess, um, if that makes any sense. The momentum is kind of conserved. So if it comes in at a fast speed, it actually gets pulled through the obsidian pipe at a fast speed. If it just kind of hits the sort of how items, you see how they kind of hit the ground and then go kind of slow for a little bit? If you do that, it goes slow, but if you just throw it right on the pipe, it's going at the fast speed, so it actually gets pulled at through the faster speed. So that's kind of an interesting little topic. Didn't know if you guys knew that. Um, the other thing is, we mapped out the areas that are affected in terms of uh, how effect the effective area where items can be pulled into an obsidian pipe using various engines. In a redstone engine, the effective area is one block in front of the obsidian pipe. And in front can be to the side in front, down, up, whatever orientation it is, which is defined by the opposite end of the obsidian pipe, the sort of one that's obviously in the front. And for a redstone engine, it's a 3x3 three three area centered around the the, um, the obsidian pipe. And for the steam and combustion engines, the area is actually exactly the same. It's um, just the difference in the speed of and, and of how many items can be pulled with each stroke of the engine. But the uh, to figure out this area, basically you just take the redstone engine area, which is the 3x3, three three, uh, centered around the obsidian pipe, and you move out um, one two, three, a total of four blocks in front of the obsidian engine, um, or obsidi obsidian pipe. And basically how I figure this out is, it's four blocks in front of the obsidian pipe, which is right there. So this is the center. And then count out one, two, three, four blocks. One, two, three, four blocks from that center. One, two, three, four blocks in each direction. One, two, three, four one, two, three, four, and then make a square, and that's the largest amount of area you can you can pull. And then each block closer to the obsidian engine is actually in by what is in, in a square 
in by one block. So you can kind of see that little pattern here. That's kind of how, how you figure it out. And then we look to see how many items per stroke of the engine. We know from a redstone engine it's one item per every stroke of the engine. Redstone engines get faster as they get hotter, just like uh, most other engines. With steam engine, the maximum amount seems to be 13 items per stroke. Uh, with a combustion engine, the maximum amount seems to be 16 items per stroke. With a steam engine, pretty reliably, the first stroke always takes 6 items and then 13 thereafter. With a combustion engine, it seems like it's able to take 16 items right from the beginning. And the amount of strokes are faster than the steam engine, so uh, overall the combustion engine is definitely the most efficient and fastest, as you would imagine. But not nearly as different and, than the steam engine that I would have thought. Okay, so that's uh, pretty cool information about obsidian pipes. You can see we filled a whole episode now looking at obsidian pipes, and uh, yeah, I think I wasted enough of your time. Hopefully you found this pretty interesting, and um, what I'm going to do is end up using this sort of design in a, uh, in a melon farm, in a pumpkin farm, where I only need uh, one, basically one obsidian um, pipe with a combustion engine to sort of suck up what I need. And if you go over here, I sort of outlined the essentially the effective area of one of these suckers if you suspend it in midair. And how I figured this is any item thrown in this white area right here will be able oops, to be sucked up by this system. I'm actually picking up items as I, as I can move along. Anything outside this area will not be picked up. So here you go. Cool, right? Yeah, nice. Okay, so um, how you figure this out, again, this is one, two, three, four uh, at this block level, right where that white wool is. That's four blocks below. And then I just uh, counted here. Oops, sorry. Wait, let's see. Right there is the center. And then it's one, two, three, four out. One, two, three, four out. One, two, three, four on that way, and one, two, three, four that way, and then just make a square. And that's your ma that's your most uh, the highest area. If you want to put items in the second level, um, you won't be able to pick up items. Say, for example, on this yellow piece of block. Oops! Damn it! Throw it on the yellow. But you can pick up the ones on the white. Okay, it leaves the yellow alone. Get rid of this. They can now pick it up. Pretty cool, huh? Alright, so there you go. There we have it. This is a long enough episode. And um, thanks, guys, for watching. Hopefully you found it useful. And uh, see you in the next vid. So long.